you are doing materials wrong in twin motion. I will be talking about the top five ways you can improve the quality of your renders by fixing these material mistakes. These tips will not only make your life easier, but also drastically improve the quality of your renders. Make sure you actually add materials to your 3D model. I've seen many times where people just leave the model blank and then render it with whatever, especially with the interior. I don't want your rendering to be an all white interior space that looks like it should be a mental asylum, unless that's exactly what you're trying to go for. But anyway, let's hop into the video. You're not properly using texture mapping or scale for the elements that you apply. There's four different types of mapping styles. Preferably, I use the cubic style. I feel like it maps the materials the best um, on any kind of surface, whether it's a curvature or a flat or folded face. But you can also choose if the material is applied to replace an existing material. So it replaces all of them. So you can do multiple walls at once if they're all the same material. Or the other option is replacing each object individually. And so what that does is each wall or each face, you can apply a material only to that and it won't apply to anything else. Now, if you're trying to do multiple things at once, I would recommend using replace material. That'll make it a lot faster and that way you're not applying materials to every single wall when they all are gonna be the same in the long run. But also don't make everything the same material. And originally, if your model is just a blank white model, it'll apply everything um, to that category. So then go in and change the exterior walls and interior walls and the flooring to be different. And just depending on space, make sure that you find the best fit for those materials. And sometimes the issue with your materials is that the scale of the texture or the orientation is incorrect. If you're using a wood paneling material, sometimes it looks better vertically versus like horizontal. So just keeping that orientation in mind, but also sometimes the scale of either concrete or other textures is way too large. So it seems very unrealistic and so just keep that in mind when applying your textures. If you have been using default materials, you must stop immediately and start using higher quality materials. I really insist on this. If you're just using the basic materials in twin motion, you really need to think about finding other materials either online or using twin motion Quixel library. This will provide more realistic materials that get very detailed and have qualities from 4K to even 16K. By downloading these materials or applying them, you can also add bump textures, roughness, and other types of texture mapping. Now, although you can have a basic material into motion and still apply those, the quality is still a lot better if you were to go to um, websites like Polygon, Polyhaven, and SketchUp Textures online. If you go into Twin Motion and select Quixel Megascans, there is a folder called Surfaces, and what's in there is very high quality materials. These are a lot different than the ones that you find in the default materials on Twin Motion. Although they don't have, I think, glass and a couple others, um, but for woods and concrete, it's definitely a better resource for finding higher quality materials. Another tip that I actually found while researching for this video is downloading the Quixel Bridge library. And what you can do is download that through Epic Games. Obviously you have one of those accounts because you have Twin Motion, but you can download that to your laptop or your PC or whatever. The primary purpose of the Quixel Bridge library is to easily import materials into Unreal Engine 5. Now we're not using that right now. And so what you can do as an alternative is just download the materials and the folders and all the maps that you want, and that's it. You don't have to do export or anything else. That's only for Unreal Engine. And so we don't have to worry about that. But these are very good materials and it's free. So that's another bonus. If I catch you using default materials or textures again, you will be forced to subscribe to this channel. If you are not using bump textures, this is your sign to start. You shouldn't have a problem finding these if you listened to my last step. But if not, I'll go through it a little bit more detail. It is not enough to just download the surface image that gives you the texture. You need to add bump and roughness texture maps, and they are crucial when applying materials, especially the ones in the foreground where you can see them the most. These texture maps give the material depth and shadow, making it more believable to the eye that it is a realistic material. In addition to all the other tips, using the grudge tool will add another layer of complexity to your renders. Using the grudge tool or adding decals found in the Quixel library will show imperfections 
on your surfaces. And you might be thinking, that's a bad thing to have imperfections on your building all over. But when you actually think about it, imperfections actually increase realism to the human eye, as no building ever makes it past construction without weathering or a few scratches. There's never gonna be a wall that is completely brand new or a building that was as shiny as it was in the showroom. Another problem I see a lot is that people are not using complementary materials or using too many different materials in their models. You must use materials that look good together, but also make sense. This means placing materials that are right for the room and also the location of the building, the program, among other things. Just like a color palette, you should make a material palette, but initially limit yourself to maybe three or four materials, and that way you can focus on the most important ones that you wanna showcase in your design. And then from there, if you need to add some more accessory materials, go for it, but that's after you finalize the main three or four materials that you're gonna use. And the reason I'm asking you to initially lower the amount of materials you're using is to provide consistency throughout the model. If you're using a different material each wall or each floor, it's gonna get confusing. By using the same materials, it'll provide consistency throughout the whole building. Bonus tip. The biggest mistake people make is putting a material that doesn't fit the space. Obviously, don't put carpet in a bathroom, but a mountain house cabin might have carpet to keep people's feet warm when it's cold. Just be present in the moment and aware of what materials would work given the scenario. Hopefully you learned something in today's video that you can use on your own projects. Thank you for watching and welcome to the grind.